In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Visual Basic to do the same Monte Carlo analysis that we did with the data table or by creating multiple copies of our model. So in this case, we're going to rely on the code though, but to do that, we're actually going to start by recording a macro. Uh, one way to teach yourself how to program is to do actions in Excel while recording the macro and see what the line of code looks like that comes back out. So we're going to do that here by copying our outcome and then pasting it over into the area of where our data table used to be. So let me show you exactly what I mean. So first we're gonna to go to the developer tab and we're gonna hit record macro. So once I hit this, you can name it, we'll just name it test macro, we hit okay. And now all the actions that I take are going to be recorded and made into a line of code. And we'll see that in just a second. So what I'm interested in is this total and whether I win or not. So I'm gonna highlight that, copy it, come over here and paste values. So we've recorded that first run. Now I can do the same thing. Copy those two cells, go down a row, paste values. And I can keep going down, pasting my values and basically recording each Monte Carlo trial. So you could imagine I could do this all day and eventually get to a thousand trials and we could analyze it the same way we just did with our data table. But what we'd like to be able to do is adapt our code to do this all for us. So let's see what it's done so far. So let's start by hitting stop recording and let's go into our Visual Basic code. So the first thing you'll notice is I already had a module set up here. Option explicit has started out and that's module one. It actually went and created a new module for me, module two that you'll see here on the left hand side. So let's click into that module and here we see test macro that we just created. And let's look at a couple lines of code it created. First, it's selected the range G11 to H11. Those are the two cells that I was interested in copying. So right there, it tells you how to select a couple cells in the spreadsheet. You see the next command is selection.copy. That's what initiated the control C or copying those two cells. I then went to K11. K11 was where I started my data table output. So that's where I'm recording my answers. I selected that cell. And then this whole next line here, notice that at the end it's connected with this underscore, which makes it go to the next line, is my paste special values. So I didn't necessarily know how to write the, the actual code for paste special values, but I know how to record a macro and get it to show me exactly what that line of code I need is. So at the end of this point, you can kind of see that we've done one set through the data, right? We've copied it once and pasted it once. Now you can see we get to the next section where we actually selected that same G11, H11 range again. We copied it. Application.copy mode equals false. It's a line that it put in there. That's not actually gonna be that important for us. So we'll be able to get rid of that in the future. We selected K12, the next line down in our output, and then we pasted special again. So that's kind of the second time through. So you can start to see we're building up a looping structure where we're gonna have our first set of code that we can just repeat over and over and over again. We'll just have to adapt our code a little bit to make that work. Finally, you see that I kept going down. I, you notice I didn't have to keep copying because it had those same two cells copied. So then I just simply went K13, paste values, K14, paste values, K15, paste values, and that rounded out the rest of the code there. So what I'm gonna do now is take part of this code I've made, take it back to the other module we were ready to work in, and start building up our actual VBA code by using this code that I recorded. That way I know the basic structure of what I'm trying to do. All right, so let's flip back over to module one and I'm gonna create a sub over here called, we'll call it Monte Carlo, copy paste. All right, to indicate that we're using copy paste as our way to get our answers over into our output where we're recording it. So by setting up our initial code and, cop and recording it in a macro, we know what we need to do over and over again. Now we can create our loop to hold that piece of code that we do over and over again. So let's start with a loop here. We're gonna start by defining our loop variable. So we'll use, let's actually, instead of using i, let's use something like loop num to keep track of which loop we're in. And then we're gonna go for loop num equals one. And let's just go to 10 for right now. We'll just create a small loop from one to 10. And now inside that loop, this is where we can actually 
paste our code that we want to do over and over again. All right, so if we want to do this 10 times in a row, we can now run this code. So let's just see what happens when we go over into Excel and run it. So we're over here. I'm going to clear out what we had. We're going to go into macros, and I will run this copy-paste macro. If you notice really quickly, it actually did 10 trials, but it pasted them all in the exact same cell. We always paste it in K11. And the reason is, is that we only know that K we start in K11 every single time. The code doesn't yet know to go down to the next row down. If you remember before, I actually had to kick, click K11, then K12, K13, K14, and on and on and on. So what we could do is we could write our code and actually explicitly type out K11 select, K12 select, but that's going to be repetitive. We can't really rely on that to do this a thousand times. We can do it a few times, but we don't want to have that as the structure within the loop. So we need a better way to select the starting cell and then go down each time. So the way we've done this in the previous cell, previous videos, is we've actually taken inputs from the user as to what row and column they want to put the output in, and then we can increment those as we go through the loops. So let's say create a couple new variables. So we'll keep output row as an integer, and we'll do output column as an integer as well. And the way we can figure out where to start out is we're just going to go look at what K11 is. So we know right away that output row equals 11. Now output column, it's going to be easiest to work with if we has a, have it as a number. So let's just go figure out which number it is. I'll put a one here as a placeholder while we go figure it out in Excel. So I want to know what row is this. All we got to do is count. And right, if we highlight that, sometimes Excel will tell us how many rows we have. It's not telling me right now, so let's just count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. All right, so we have the 11th column. So let's put that in as well. So we have output row 11, output column 11. So the line of code that we need to change now, and we're spacing it out here, is this range K11 select. Instead, we're going to use a slightly different statement here. We're going to say cells, and we can say output row comma output column select. So that's the change that we're going to make. And now it should be selecting cell K11. So let's actually make sure this is working. Let's flip back over. We'll delete this and we'll rerun our macro again. So let's actually go in, run our macro. We see the same result. We're still not moving down, right? But we're at least putting it in the right spot. So now we can adapt our code to actually increment down each time. So let's go make that change. And the way we can do that is by each time through this loop, we're going to augment this output row. So instead of being just output row always 11, we want to go 11, 12, 13, 14, etc. So that first time through, we don't want it to add anything on. We want it to stay in 11, but loop num is equal to 1. So we're going to have to do loop num minus 1. So we're always going to be basically lagged one behind. So that first time we want to add zero, the second time we'll add one, the third time we'll add two, et cetera. So we're always moving down one row each time through the code. So let's flip back now that we've made that small change. And now when we run our macro, we see that it actually populates down 10 rows all sequentially. So we now have 10 different trials. So now if we want to do 1,000 trials, we can do the exact same thing. We can just extend this from loop num 1 to loop num 1,000. We flip back over, run the same thing. It takes a little bit longer to run. Notice it has the hourglass. It's thinking a little bit longer. It's not going to take too much longer, but this will give you a sense for how long these things can take. Uh, and you can kind of imagine if you're doing this a million times, you're going to have a lot more processing power needed. And really, if you're doing that, odds are you don't want to do it in Excel, and there's some other softwares to use. So here we can see our 1,000 just finished up. We have our 1,000 trials from VBA, and now we can analyze the outcome of those trials. All right, so let's actually clear this out, and I want to show you the one weakness of this method. So say you go through, and we run 10. So we'll change it back to just 10 loops. We run that, and we get 10. And now we want to do 10 more, right? 
if we do 10 more, it's gonna always start up here in this first cell and overwrite the ones we've had previously. So in the next video, we're gonna look at how do we then just increment and start at the bottom here and then add 10 more on top of that. So it'll be a little bit different technique, but it's gonna still use the same looping ideas, the same copy paste that we've been using before.